What's up, fight fans? MMA Locker Room here with Pig Dogs, and I'm going to be going over this week's UFC Atlantic City card over all the 14 fights and give you guys my picks and predictions and how we can come out and make some money and beat up these bookies, okay? All right, now look, this fight card is not that bad, all right? Um, you got 14 fights and none of them fizzled out. We got the headline main event, Aaron Blanchfield taking on Minera Ferro. We got the co-main event, Joaquin Buckley taking on Vicente Luque. Um, besides that, man, it seems like we got some UFC debutants that's going to be making their debut. And some people that the UFC probably want to win based on their favorable matchup. So let's go ahead and go over all these picks and see how we can get it started and put some money in your pocket. But before we do that, man, let me know. How would you guys do last week on UFC? Let me know. Who would you make money on? Did your underdog bark? Man, my boy Fernando Padilla came through, man. What about it, man? We had an interview with him, and, uh, you know, we spoke to him, and, you know, I spoke to him about subbing his opponent. We played him inside the distance. We played him to win by sub plus 400, and I know some people cashed on him at plus 1,200 to win by first round sub. All right, now let's go ahead and get it started, man. The first fight of the night, man. You got Colin Lauferin, uh, eight and one, taking on Angel uh, Angel Pacheco. Uh, Angel Pacheco made his UFC debut on the Contender Series, and he lost. And now he's here. All right, let's get down to the odds. Lauferin opened up a minus three hundred. He's all the way up to a minus three fifty. He made his UFC debut taking on Taylor Lapis, uh, Cage Warriors fighter. Wasn't able to get the decision in there. We had Lapis in that fight. Uh, it was a 1-1 decision going into the third round. But Laughlin comes from the Cage Warriors. He's the type of fighter that likes to push the uh, pace with wrestling and everything like that. Uh, he loves being the bad guy. In this spot, I think the UFC has given him a layup in this one. I like Colin Laughlin to get it done. I actually think he could win by decision in this one or even in third round ground and pound. Okay, So uh, if you guys are looking for a nice parlay piece, I like Laughlin a lot in this spot. Second fight taking place in the middleweight, man. Jacob Malcolm, seven wins, three losses, taking on Andre Petrosky, 10 wins, three losses. All right. Jacob Malcolm opened up a minus 200 favorite. He's up to a minus 240 favorite. But if you ask me, I think the line's off. I think both these guys resemble the same game plan, man. You got two wrestlers that want to go up there and grapple, get their opponent down to the ground. If it stays on the feet, Andre Petrosky has a little bit more power and a lot more clean striking. Um, Jacob Malcolm, he's been looking good. I think he's made his UFC debut, and I think he was like 0-2, but then he turned it around and just started winning. Uh, you know, pulling off big upsets as an underdog. Andre Petrosky, uh, you know, faces defeat last time out against my boy uh, Michelle Pajara in there. He took a fight on short notice in there. I think the line's off in there. I think it should be like Jacob Malcolm, maybe minus 160 on here. Um, Petrosky can be live. Uh, both these guys resemble each other if you know if one can get more takedowns on the other hey whoever knows but when we talk about the takedown average Jacob Malcolm's averaging about seven takedowns compared to Petrosky averaging about four and here orthodox fighter versus a switch stance fighter in here I think Malcolm should be able to get it done by decision but um I'm gonna be honest man in here I think the price tag is off and uh Petrosky uh he's been that underdog that's been proving people time and time again that he can win in that underdog spot just like he did against Nick Maximoff but I like Malcolm to get it done by decision I think he's going to be able to push that pace all 15 minutes Petrosky does slow down drastically uh once it gets past that eight minute mark all right third fight on the card Melissa Gatto eight wins two losses taking on uh Victoria Dudakova all right Gatto's a minus 150 favorite in there okay uh, due to COVID in here, she's 8-0 undefeated. Uh, didn't look that good in her last fight out, but she was able to get the win in here. Gato, been kind of an up and down thing. I've never really been betting on her. I've been betting against her. I had Tracy Cortez in the fight that Cortez won. I had Aaron Lipsky in that fight, and Aaron Lipsky was able to beat Melissa Gato in here. But she's a jiu-jitsu specialist, wants to get you down to the ground. Did, due to COVID, can mix in the wrestling and takedowns herself on here. Gato's a minus 150. I really don't trust her in this spot. I mean, how can I? I mean, I, I've been fading her ever since she's been in the UFC. Um, Duda Kova can mix in some takedowns herself. The striking uh, is clean. M Melissa Gatto is the overall better fighter in here, though. Um, you know, gosh, gosh man, the reaches. The reach is in favor for Gatto in this one. When it comes down to the striking lands per minute, they're both kind of the same. The takedown average in here, I mean, Duda Copa can get it down on herself. I like the dog in this one. I've been going against Gatto. I'm not going to stop now. It's been profitable, man. I'm 2-0 going against her. Um, But this is not a spot that I'm saying 
yeah, this is the best underdog to bet on or anything, but I I'm taking the underdog in this one. I don't like what I've been seeing from Melissa Gatto, so let's go ahead and go with Duda Cobra to win. Um, you know, uh, let's go ahead and take it to win by decision in that one. All right, next fight taking place. It's going to be a rematch, folks. Anton Tokali, 8-3, taking on Ibo Asam, 12-1. All right, Ibo Asam made his UFC debut on a contender series. was able to get out his opponent real quick, easy. All right. Turkali, we all know the story with him. He goes by the name of Pleasure Man, but I'm going to tell you like this. Ain't nothing pleasurable about the way he fights. He's a sloppy uh, guy out there, you know what I mean? Light heavyweight. Uh, doesn't do one thing great. He does some things good. And this one, uh, it was opened up as a pick -em in here. Uh, now Asan is up to a minus 120 in here. Somebody told me about this fight before it even got announced and was like, Asan's a fraud. He doesn't have no cardio. He uses steroids. Uh, Tarkali was able to get the win in that fight because uh, Assad just gassed out. And here, I'm going to be honest, man. There's no way I'm betting on Tarkali in here. And I don't really trust Assad either. But based off of who should win, if you're making your UFC debut and they're giving me somebody like Tarkali, I think the UFC wants Assad to win in here. Um, but it doesn't just go off of that. Overall, I'm going to go with Asan to get the revenge spot in here. Um, I just can't trust Turkali, um, no matter what. And it's one of those things to where it's like you're fading a bad fighter with another bad fighter. So pick your poison in that one. All right. Next fight taking place. Everybody out there, smash that like button for me. Smash that like button for me. And hey... After you're done watching this, go on to the UFC, go on to the Pick Dark section. Check out the UFC shorts. I did my top three lightweights out there. I went over all the best three lightweights. Check it out. It just came out about a day or two ago. We're going to be dropping those uh, tier videos for you guys each and every week. Stay tuned for those. All right, next fight taking place. Dennis Bazooka, 11-4, taking on Connor Matthews, 7-1. You guys know the story with De Dennis Bazooka. If you don't, man, made his UFC debut on a contender series. Didn't get the contract, so a lot of people is itching for him to get the contract. Never got the contract, but got his way into the UFC. But and so far, he's been 0-2 in there. Trains at one of the better gyms, Sarah Longo, uh, you know, with reputable fighters like Matt Frivola, uh, Marab Divashali, Al Jermaine Sterling, and the list goes on, right? Connor Matthews on the other side, he's 7-1 in here, you know. Um, he's a fighter that likes to push the pace. Decent striking, switch stance uh, fighter, you know. Um, both these guys are young and green to where I don't really know what you're going to get from them. You know, so I wouldn't put too much invested into none of these picks right here. Oh, man. Dennis bazooka has been on the wrong side of some fights, man. I think that he could maybe get the job done in this one. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go with Dennis Bazooka in this spot, man. He's been, he's been given a tough task trying to get in there in the UFC. And I think this is his last shot to get it all. And he's going to have the Atlantic City crowd behind him, you know, because uh, that's where they, not not where they're from, New Jersey, but they kind of train out there, Long Island and stuff. So, all right, Bazooka, let's go ahead and get it done, man. And I think he's going to get it done by decision, folks. If you guys are reading what I'm giving out, I think a lot of these fights are going to the distance, not finishing in this one. All right, next fight coming up, Featherweight. Julio Arce, 18 wins, 6 losses. Taking on Herbert Burns, 11 wins and 4 losses. Julio Arce opened up a minus 500 favorite. Now he's down to a minus 380. All right, so Julio Arce, we haven't seen him in about a year and a half. Took some time off. Herbert Burns, the last time we seen him, he had a freakish injury against Bill Algio. And, you know, he had to get knee surgery. And uh, from what I'm hearing, it's like the second time he had to replace that knee or get, get get surgery done on the knee. But when it comes down to it, yes, he's the brother of Gilbert Burns. Yes, he's deadly with jujitsu if he can get you down to the ground. But if it stays on the feet, man, he's just a fish out of water. He only lands about 1.6 strikes per minute compared to Julio Arce. He's laughing at about 4.3 uh, strikes per minute on here. Overall, Julio Arce is solid, man. Solid takedown defense in here. Um... I think Julio Arce is going to win in this one. I'm going to go ahead and say uh, he gets him done by third round of decision in this, folks. But Herbert Burns, yes, man. I mean, he's live to get a submission if he takes your back and gets you down to the ground. But besides him, you know, knocking out Nate Lamb, we're out of nowhere and stuff. I, I really didn't like what I seen from Herbert Burns, you know, at this stage of his career and stuff. You know, he didn't have all those tools to be getting in the UFC at this stage of his career to be losing to average people in the UFC. So let's go ahead, man. I like Julio Arce to get it done in this one. Um, minus 300 favorite is high. It's high, but he should be able to get it done. 
All right, next fight taking place. Verena Jernaroba, 19 wins, 3 losses, taking on Lupi Godinez. All right, the opening odds got Lupi Godinez the favorite. Minus 200 on there, man. We all know the story with Lupi Godinez. She's one of the most active fighters out there, you know. Um, she's good at boxing, clean boxing, mixes in the takedowns, has cardio for days on here. Uh, Jernaroba, man, she can't strike for anything, but you just you is top tier. She gets you down to the ground. She gets you down to the and takes your back. You're going to go tap, tap, tap. Easy as that. But she's been getting better, too, with the striking. She could throw some power uh, looping hooks and stuff, man. Um, Lupi Godinez, I used to bet on her back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. Faded her one spot. Well, no, bet on her big one spot. Minus 300 favorite against Angela Hill. She didn't shoot for any takedowns. Lost money. Been trying to get my money back from her ever since then. And here, man, um, it should go to the scorecards in there. Janda Robles fight IQ. I got to give it a B. Um... Lupi Godinez, cardio, though, I got to give it an A. The striking, I got to give it a B. Um, the rest line, I got to give it a B, too, as well. Um, finishability on Jandaroba, mm, I give it like a C plus. Overall, this is a close fight, man. This line is a little bit off, if you ask me. I think it's like minus one, 170, uh, but it shouldn't be a minus 220 up here. The pick is Lupi Godinez, though. I do think she's going to be able to get this one done. She's the more active fighter, have more tools in the toolbox. And just off the boxing alone, if she keeps this on the feet and just boxes in and out, it's going to look like a minus 500 favorite. All right, next fight taking place. We got a featherweight banger. We got Jamal Emers, 20 wins, 7 losses, taking on Nate Landwehr. Nate the train, baby. 17 wins and 5 losses. All right, there. Books got Jamal Emers a minus 220 favorite. Come back on Nate Landwehr plus 180. All right, man, look. Nate Landwehr holds a special spot in my heart, man. I seen him fight live versus David Anima, uh, Anima, and it was one of the best fights ever, man. He literally, like, told the dude, get up off the ground, flex like this to the crowd, and then start beating him up. He was a big underdog in the spot. It was one of the best fights ever, man. You guys just need to look it up. Nate Landwehr versus David Onama. Um, he was able to win in that third round uh, and, and went over the crowd. He won over a lot of fans there. Last time out, though, he wasn't able to get the job done against Dan Ige. Um, you know, um, that's just how it goes, though, man. Jamal Emers, last time out for Jack Jenkins in the fight that a lot of people thought he won. But the judges gave it to the other guy in here. He's a guy that's been... Kind of putting it together a little bit better. Um, you know, uh, fight IQ is decent. Uh, he has multiple paths to win in fights, but sometimes he just loses, you know, and doesn't look like he's pulling that trigger to, to, to do what he needs to in here. And this one, though, I like Jamar Emers. I think he should be able to get it done in here. Um, the striking on Nate Land where it's, it's powerful. It's there. But technically sound, it's not. Um, damn. Nate Land where by sub, could be a luck, man. A great plus money price tag look, but I'm going to go ahead and go with Jamal Emers to get it done. All right, next fight taking place. Ch uh, Chidi and Jukui, uh, 22 wins, 10 losses, taking on Reese McKee. All right, so the storyline on this. Chidi is coming back down to welterweight. He's a minus 140 favorite, all right? Reese McKee, that guy got thrown to the wolves his first day in the UFC. Now he's back, you know, after he made some nice wins in the cage warrior scene, trying to trying to get his career back going in here. When it comes down to it, both these guys are kind of similar with the frame. Uh, you know, both long strikers like to use the kickboxing um, to, to get the fights going. Uh, strikes landed per minute, got to go with Reese McKee in this one. I think Chitty should be able to uh, win in this fight. And plus... Reese McKee, if you're betting on him, you're kind of just betting on a long shot um, because uh, in the UFC, he still hasn't been able to, you know, get, to, to get his feet wet and, and to show people, hey, man, I could get two uh, consistent wins in there. Chitty, he's been up and down, man. Um, in spots that you think he's going to win, he lets you down. But in this spot, minus 140, that's a spot I could take and, and bet on and gamble on and get my money back. All right, this is my get back spot. You lost money for me versus Derive. We need our money in this one. Next fight taking place, Bill Algio versus Cal Nelson. Bill Algio is a minus 250 favorite. Um, taking on a pressure fighter like Cal Nelson who was able to get the win over Padilla in his last fight. Bill Algio, volume is going to be there. He's going to be able to push the face. He's not going to stand right in front of Cal Nelson. I like Bill Algio a lot. I'm going to say that's my second leg in a parlay. Take Bill Algio and Lawford. That's my bulletproof parlay to get you pay. Next fight on the card, Nurson Razabov, 35 wins, 8 wins, 8 losses, 2 draws, taking on Cedric Dumas, 9 wins, 1 loss. All right, Razabov's a minus 260 favorite. Um, 
Last time out against Bruno Ferrer, he looked good. Made his UFC debut and knocked him out. Cedric Dumas, 2-0 and in his last two fights. 2-1 uh, and one total in the UFC. Coming off a win against Abu Azatar, uh, you know, and Cody Brandage in there. If you guys want some more information on Cedric Dumas in this fight, check out my interview with him. Um, just type in MMA Locker Room Interview Cedric Dumas. Man, he's a guy that's been uh, in and out of the news, man. You know, he was in jail, arrested for some stuff, and then got out and still had the fight going on in the camp, man. Um, And here, a lot of people are betting on Dumas in the spot. If Razabov isn't able to get him down at the ground, Dumas will be live in here. Um, people think that Razabov can't get out the first round and second round. We'll look and see. I'll be honest, man. Um, If Razabov uses the wrestling takedowns, he should be able to get Dumas down to the ground and struggle. Um, Could probably win by sub. But if it stays on the feet, I like Dumas a lot in this spot. Um, and he can actually mix in the wrestling a little bit on his own, on the takedowns in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with a uh, fight. Fight's going to end in round two. That's my prediction in this one. And I'm going to go ahead and say, man, I'm going to be honest with you guys, though, man. I like Razabov. Um, when he first came out. And I kind of liked him in this matchup uh, once it first got announced. But I mean, just how it goes, man. Once you talk to a fighter and you hear their game plan and stuff like that and strategy, maybe maybe you become a little bit susceptible to, to thinking something else. I think Cedric Dumas is a live dog in here, man. Um, Not just off the interview, but just because Razabov hasn't been tested in here. So let's go ahead, man. Let's take the dog money, man. Let's, let's get the dog money with Cedric Dumas. The next fight taking place, Chris Weidman versus Bruno Silva. Yeah, Chris Weidman, that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the guy that broke his leg, the other fight, mm -hmm. he's fighting. Bruno Silva's the favorite. Oh, minus 270 is. Oh, is this Chris Weidman's last fight? It probably is. Retirement, right? Atlantic City. Um, I'll be honest, man. I don't like what I've been seeing from him. His last fight out against Brad Tavares in there. Even before that, I was never a Chris Weidman fan, but I do appreciate everything he's done for the sport. And here I like Bruno Silva to get it done. Um, Yeah, and that'll be another leg for a parlay to get you guys paid. Cold main event time. Vicente Luque taking on Joaquin Buckley. Vicente Luque, 22 wins, 9 losses. Buckley, 17 wins, 6 losses. This line was a pick em all week. Now, people's betting on Buckley because he went from an underdog. Now, you know, it's my minus 105 on here. Vicente Luque has been looking good in his last couple of fights out. Joaquin Buckley, um, you owe me on this one, man. I bet on you versus Chris Curtis. You was looking great in that fight. Looking great, looking great. Then got knocked out, man. But I like the way that Buckley strikes, man. He's mixing in wrestling, too, with his takedowns. He has great cardio. The fight IQ, I give him a C. Uh, finish ability, not all there. But when it comes down to it, mixing it up and knowing what he's good at, he knows what to do in this spot, man. Vicente Luque, though, I think he's I think he's good. And I think uh, at a minus 115, I think that's like a st the still of the day. Like, I really do. But I'm going with Joaquin Buckley in this spot. Um... Uh, Vicente Luque is there to get hit, and Joaquin Buckley's going out there to hit. So I think he could even finish uh, Vicente Luque in this fight as well. And if not, I think he could do enough of the feet work and uh, mix in the takedowns and just stay on the outside, circle him up. So uh, let's go with Buckley in that spot. I like him in that one. Main event time, Aaron Blanchfield taking on Manel Ferro. 12-1 for Aaron Blanchfield, 11-1 for Ferro. All right, Aaron Blanchfield is minus 180 on there. To be honest, I'm a biggest fan of Aaron Blanchford. I've been betting her ever since she came in the UFC, and I'm not going against it now. But Manel Ferro is live in this spot, folks. Uh, the striking, she has power. Um, you know, she's good with the footwork. Uh, she's averaging about six strikes per minute in here. Aaron Blanchford, though, she's just cold. She's just cold-blooded. Um, you know, she wins this fight. She's fighting for the title next. Point blank period. She should have been fighting for the title now, man. Forget a fucking third fight. We all know, man. Aaron Blanchfield is the real true champ. Whoever whoever gets the belt after that, you're just holding it for Blanchfield. Cold-blooded. That's how she wanted. I'm going to go ahead and predict it. Aaron Blanchfield wins round three or round four by sub. All right, let's go ahead. Now, look, 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 look. If you guys exactly want to see more videos like this, smash that like button. Check out my UFC top tier video, okay? All right, let's go over everything for you guys real quick. All right, recap time. We're taking Lawford, Malcolm, uh, Dudakova, Asia. We're taking Bazooka. We're taking Arce. We're taking Lupi Godinez. We're taking Emmers. We're taking Chetty and Twickley. We're taking Algio. We're taking Dumas, Silva, Buckley, and Blanchfield. Mills Young here, part of Pick Dogs. If UFC bet with me, 